You guys didn't think I was gonna do another video and not drink a beer, did you? So in this video, we're gonna talk about gimbals and mostly we're gonna talk about why I hate them. Now, this isn't gonna be a totally like bias video on gimbals are the worst, no one should ever buy gimbals, but I'm gonna talk about the downside of gimbals and why you might wanna reconsider using one on a professional gig. So to start this off, I'm gonna tell you a little story about when I got the call to go shoot for Adidas in London. So my director friends got this opportunity to shoot this kind of fashion film for the Adidas Neo brand. They really wanted me to help shoot it with them because I had shot a lot of projects for them up until this point. And the production company honestly was not really stoked to flying someone um, from the United States over to London to shoot it when there's all these amazing DPs in London. But they tried to convince the producer and the producer was kind of on the fence about it. But then they're like, all right, well, the producer wants to know if, you know, you know, it's gonna be multiple fashion films and they're, we're only gonna have like 20 minutes with the models between setups from a photo shoot. And so the idea was to shoot with multiple cameras and having one camera on a gimbal the whole time. And they were like, well, if you can use a gimbal yourself and you know how to use one and you're efficient with it, then that'll save us some money because we won't have to have a gimbal operator or a gimbal um, technician to be there. And if that's the case, we'll fly you over and it'll all be okay. This was back when like the Movi, basically the original Movi came out. This is a big two-handed gimbal. Like you need those big two-handed gimbals when you're shooting on uh, heavier cameras. And in this case, we were shooting on the red cameras. And so I had to use the Movi uh, probably one or two times. And so I was like, yeah, sure, I can do it. This is a really big opportunity. I wasn't gonna say no. I was gonna say yes to whatever they needed me to do so I could go over there and shoot for Adidas and have this kind of awesome shooting experience. So I get there that, that morning, I'm setting up, the ACs are setting up the other two cameras. We had a Scarlet and we had an Epic and we had another Epic on the Movi and I was setting that up and I was doing okay job, but it was not balancing 100% correctly. And you know, like I was like optimistic about how I was balancing it. And I was like, it'll probably be okay. Um, these have really strong motors on them. It'll still hold the camera up, even if it's a little bit out of balance. So we're running out of time. We get to the shoot. Um, they do the first like round of photos and they're like, all right guys, jump in. It's time to shoot uh, the video portion of this and you have 25 minutes, which already was like really stressful. Like, 25 minutes to shoot something for such a big client. So I pulled out the movie, got everything going, started shooting with it, sort of walking down the street. And what happens, that, that thing starts shaking. And I think I had it pretty close to balance. I mean, I think I had it pretty balanced at this point. And it started messing up. And then all of a sudden it's not turning on. A tablet that came with it wasn't controlling it anymore. And all this stuff just started going wrong on the very first shot. Now it's pretty common, the first shot of the day is always gonna be your hardest shot. But this, I mean, it had me so nervous. I mean, this was one of the bigger things that I'd ever done. I was there to impress some people so I could get my name out there and the movie wasn't working. And so I had to pivot, I had to do something. I wasn't gonna sit there and let this robot determine the destiny of my career. I quickly grabbed another camera and started shooting with that handheld instead. I've always shot everything handheld, so I was really comfortable with that. And I didn't care that the movie wasn't working. You could see it in the producer's eyes that he was getting really nervous about this. We had planned to have mostly the whole thing on a stabilizer and hit all these really amazing wraparound shots, really stable shots. And we sold this whole idea to them. We just use a gimbal and everything would work out. And right out of the gate, the gimbal wasn't working. So I was nervous that the producer was going to, you know, potentially get rid of me and just bring another DP right then and there that's in London to make this work. I was genuinely nervous that I was gonna get fired from that job and that that was gonna get passed around the film industry and I wasn't gonna get any more jobs after that. Luckily, the producer took a deep breath and decided to just bring in a movie tech right on the day, played, paid that person a few hundred dollars to be there and to make sure the movie was working the entire time. And all he would do is he would, he would walk around with me basically, he would make sure everything was working on there, everything was balanced on it. And then when I needed it, immediately just kick it on, hand it to me, I would shoot with it and hand it back to him. And that was like, Another lesson from that is like having the resources, having the support team around you to get the shot was so helpful. When you only have 25 minutes between each setup to shoot, shoot something, having that support there just to make everything more efficient was so awesome. There's so many jobs that I've done in my career where I've just been shooting by myself, a one man show, and actually having a full team there. I mean, we had set dressing and makeup and wardrobe and uh, props and three cameras. The directors were shooting with cameras. I was shooting with the cameras. I mean, I had two ACs. When you have all that support, things really get done easily. And that goes back to the gimbals to begin with. I mean, um, gimbals in that size and that caliber tend to need a lot of support behind them. You definitely need a first AC to pull focus for you. Otherwise you're pulling focus on the thumb wheel and you're holding 
a heavy camera up here on your arms and it's completely unnatural to hold a camera like that. And that brings me to the first point of why I don't like gimbals. They're just not natural. I mean, we're talking about a robot basically that is sitting there manning the camera for you. Sure, you're telling the robot what to do and sure the shots are nice and smooth, but at the end of the day, you can notice it. You know that someone is using a gimbal behind that and you know that it's not a human operating that. I feel like that can take the audience out of whatever they're watching. And for me personally, as an operator, it takes me out of what I can do with the camera. To me, I feel like a gimbal really can put you into a creative box. You know, if I have a camera handheld, I'm walking around, I can grab a shot here, I can grab a shot there, I can go low real fast, I can move left, right, and I, it's my body telling the camera what to do, and I will have the flexibility to get the shot that I'm trying to get. But with a gimbal, you can't tend to get stuck in the motions that the gimbal allows you to do. You're gonna tend to start worrying about the gimbal itself and less about the shot that you're trying to get. You have to remember that the gimbal has all the power and you don't. You're kind of at the mercy of it. I'm gonna go, okay, there's a shot, there's someone coming in real quick, okay, let's turn the gimbal. Oh, the lag time was slow. Or I'm running this way like this and oh, the gimbal got out of balance and now it's jittering, oh, we missed the shot. Now the same thing could happen if you're shooting handheld, of course, too. You could be stepping too much and getting some shake in the camera, but you, at least at the end of the day, you know it's your fault and it's something that maybe you can compensate with your own muscles. And then we're talking about the time that it takes to set up a gimbal and get it going on set. Um, I wanna be able to just grab a camera, get up and start shooting if something starts to happen in that kind of environment. Even if I'm on a set where it's completely controlled, what if the actors are blocking out a scene and they're walking around and they're, they're doing something that seems intriguing and I wanna grab a shot real quick, an insert shot. I can just do that with a handheld camera and that's not something you're able to do with a gimbal. And then if you're going to change lenses, I mean, something that you're gonna do very often when shooting a sequence is changing different focal lengths. Well, on a gimbal, you change the lens out, then you have to rebalance the whole thing again. They just really slow you down on set. And I don't really know if you're really gonna get that much better of an image for every shot by using the gimbal. So of course, gimbals keep your shots stable. They have their purpose. I'm not saying gimbals are all that bad. You need gimbals for certain things. Okay, if you're doing a long 30 second following shot, you can't just do that by walking. It's gonna be very shaky. So you need a gimbal for that setup. So I guess what I've noticed is that a lot of people will think that this gimbal is gonna save them, it's gonna make everything look good. So they immediately buy a gimbal, they get their camera, they strap them together and it's like they never separate from each other. It's like, oh, no, I've got my gimbal, I've got my camera, we're good to go. But really you should just be using the gimbal as another tool, another just a tool to get things steady for very specific shots that you're trying to get. And before gimbals existed, we used steady cams for stuff like this and you had a steady cam operator. Now I can understand that's also not very efficient either. You have to have an operator that has to be balanced as well. But um, you were just using the tool when you needed it and you weren't using it for every single shot. But the thing about a steady cam is it's still being operated by a human being. So you're gonna be able to react like a human would react. You'll be able to follow a subject with human eyes and not with the robot's movements. So even a steady cam tends to be a lot more natural looking. It might have a little bit of a sway into it, but you know, honestly, that's kind of natural looking too, versus a, a gimbal that might have a little jitter this way or might have a kick, it might kick around real fast. And when you're working in a professional environment, these are the kind of things that might put off the client if they're watching a client monitor on the other side of the set or wherever, um, you wanna be able to have something that looks like you know what you're doing and that the problem is that these gimbals can get in the way of that. And that's exactly what happened to me on the Adidas shoot. I mean, I did know what I was doing. I know how to make something look pretty. I knew I did, I had the confidence to do it, but that movie got in my hands and my life was kind of shattered. Another problem with gimbals is that one size doesn't fit all. I mean, if you're using something like a Pocket 4K, you're probably gonna need a gimbal kind of like a Ronin S or something like this one here. By the way, I think this is a very nice gimbal if you are gonna use a gimbal. The Ronin S seems to be work very well. Definitely a lot better than that old Movi that I used to use. But that Ronin S is eventually gonna max out with something that even like a Pocket 4K. Even the Pocket 4K doesn't really work that well on the Ronin S because it has to be offset so far to make it work. And eventually the weight's gonna get maxed out. That's what's kind of unfortunate about the gimbals is that I can't just grab my Ursa Mini and just throw that onto the Ronin S. I'm gonna need a much bigger rig. I'm gonna need someone else pulling focus for me most likely, or someone else to help me set up the Ronin in between shots to make sure that nothing goes wrong. So I don't wanna to rant too much about why I don't like gimbals, but all I, all I can really say is that when I get called for a job, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about the story first and the shots I need. And if a gimbal needs to come into play for that, then of course I will use a gimbal. But most likely, I mean, just in my style, I like to just shoot handheld. So that brings me to the next part of the video. I'm gonna talk about something that I use way more often than a gimbal. Now this isn't exactly a stabilizer, but this is something that allows me to go handheld all day and not have to worry about 
my hands going weak or my arms going weak or anything that might ruin the shot during the production. So you know when you sh are shooting handheld, especially on a camera that's heavier than your common like mirrorless camera, as you're eventually gonna get some sort of muscle shake. You know, after you're holding it so long, you're trying to keep everything nice and steady, you're gonna get some sort of muscle shake in your arms. So the best tool to kind of fix that is what's called an Easy Rig. Now the actual brand Easy Rig is something that's been around for probably 20 years. Um, and that company specifically makes the Easy Rig. That's what they called this support device when it came out. But the problem with those, is those name brand ones, is they run from like $1,500 to $6,000 for one of those. Um, but there are some other companies that are making some similar products on Amazon. I'm just gonna call it the Easy Rig for the rest of this video because that's what I've called it my whole life because that's what it was called when it came out. So what's great about the Easy Rig is, is that it, it wraps around your body, clips around your body, and then it has a, a, a cord that comes out of the top that will hold the weight of your camera. So there's tension on this cord that allows the camera to move freely up and down and for you to have full control of your camera. But instead of having all the weight on your arms, the weight is now shifted through the cord and through the support arm and into your hips. So now you're holding all the camera weight on your hips throughout the day rather than your arms. So this takes away all that shake and that fatigue that you might get from shooting all day. You can actually use the cable to kind of swing the camera left and right. And because that the cable is holding it for you and you're not having to hold it, you have a lot less room for error when doing a move like that. What's great about this too is that the camera can just like live on you. You're on set and you're needing to react quickly to things. The camera can just be hanging from you. You're not gonna feel that much weight. You're just sweat a little bit with this thing wrapped around your body. But rather than getting that muscle fatigue, you can just, you don't have to set the camera down all the time, give it, hand it off to a camera assistant. Um, you can just keep the camera on, you can walk around, you can find your shot, get your shot really quick. It's gonna be much more stable this way rather than just using your arms. And it's just something that I've found that is the most easy thing to use on set. And this is the number one piece of equipment I would recommend for a camera that's heavier than, I don't know, maybe seven pounds. You'll find that it's gonna make your life on set so much more efficient um, and less cumbersome than a gimbal for sure. Now I just wanna reiterate, this is not a stabilizer. It's not gonna do the same thing a gimbal does, but you'll find that when you use this, you're gonna be more free, you're gonna be more creative, you're gonna have more creative freedom to walk around and get the shots that you want and you need and use your mind more and not let the gimbal get in the way of your creativity. Now, I guess I could also say that this is kind of a stylistic choice. I mean, using a gimbal will give you a different kind of look versus handheld. I'm not gonna tell you just to shoot in slow motion to get cleaner shots. Although, the great thing about the Easy Rig is that if you do shoot in slow motion, but your shots are gonna look a lot more stable with that extra support from the Easy Rig. So something to note about using an Easy Rig is that the extra weight that you do have actually helps. Actually, when just shooting handheld in general, the heavier the camera is, the more stable your shot's actually gonna be. So when you have a light camera like a mirrorless camera, you tend to get that little bit of a shake when you're holding it, you know? You can't really help it. You have to hold the camera really close to your body and get as much pressure on it as you can in support in order to get rid of that shake. So there's not something like this Canon EOS R has image stabilization built into it, and so that can help with that shake for sure as well. But if you rig out this camera a little bit differently and do it kind of more like this Pocket 4K over here, and you put a cage on it, maybe a bigger battery on it, or a monitor and a top handle, you can now use this with an easy rig and get that extra weight that's gonna put tension on that, uh, that cable. And you can get those shots that I'm talking about much cleaner. A little bit of weight actually goes a long ways when shooting handheld. I'm not saying that I'm, I've boycotted gimbals altogether, but I want to say that I basically never shoot with them. Um, I only use them when I need to. If I'm doing a long following shot or if I have to shoot from a car, for instance, something like a gimbal is going to be a great way of getting a stable shot and uh, not have to worry about the shake that I would get from handheld. Really my point is don't think that just buying a gimbal is going to make all your shots look amazing. Remember that the gimbal could get in the way of your creativity and might slow you down on set and maybe even make a fool of you in front of Adidas. I mean, let me know in the comments below, has a gimbal gotten in the way of your creativity before? Or is it something that you advocate for and you feel free to convince me in the comments. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you loved it, definitely subscribe to the channel. There'll be more videos like this coming soon. Until next time, guys, I'm Spencer Sakurai. See ya.